the line, EK. Please, oh. Lord, help me get this fish in. That's the line right there, EK. This is the biggest bite I've had all week right here. <sighs> Come on, baby. Daddy needs you today. It's not over yet. Threw the swim bait on the line and got choked. Oh, thank you, Jesus. <sighs> Give me some of that. Well, here we are at Lake Gunnersville. Stop four of the Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit is over and done with. We got ourselves brand new champion, Mr. Nick LeBrun. Yep, great week. Anytime you make a top 10 is special, but to make it on Gunnersville against these ledge hammers and get the win, it was amazing. You kind of had your back against the wall yesterday, like you mentioned with the guys that you were fishing against, but uh, you overcame, you proved yourself as a Tennessee River ace, coming off that top 10 at Pickwick, now the win here. You're the man. That just sounds weird. Like I'm from <laughs> Louisiana, but you know, this event definitely, I felt like it kind of grew my tenure and it gave me some confidence that I can catch a fish and deeper than five foot of water. <laughs> so it was cool, good week. Well, uh, speaking of that confidence, I wanna see how you utilize these electronics, how a Louisiana guy catches them offshore on the Tennessee River. So I think we quit yapping in this parking lot, put it in the water and go snatch a few. Let's do it. All right, Nick, we're back up here where it all went down, all week, really. Uh, but tell me a little bit about what we're, uh, what we're fishing here. We're, we're offshore, obviously. Yeah, this is a special spot uh, to me where it all went down. You know, a lot of good memories right here by that stump. <laughs> and uh, it's just a main river ledge. Found a big school here in practice. And uh, you just gotta take these swim baits and bomb them out there as far as you can. Well, and you said, you know, we got a lot of different things we'll throw, but we're starting off with a swim bait, and I guess we just start firing. You said that green buoy's the line? Yeah, and, that's uh, the line. I suppose bomb one out there, show me how to catch one. Just oh like that. Oh boy. Nice. All right, Nick, we're bombing these swim baits out, uh, but I guess we should probably, uh, you know, tell the folks what, uh, what our setup is, what you threw this week on your swim bait, you know, rod, reel, line, that whole. Sure. Yeah, so for the swim bait, I was using a Fitzgerald Fishing All-Purpose 7.6 Heavy. And um, I like that rod because it really kind of helps me get that casting distance and also that hook set that's way, way out sure. there. Sure. Had that paired with a Fitzgerald Stoner Series Bait Cast Reel in seven to one gear ratio. And then um, on the business end of the line, Sunline FC Sniper Fluorocarbon, 18 pound. And uh, that's kind of it for the swim bait. You know, that setup really helped me get the casting distance, but also helped me have a high percentage of landing that fish that bites three miles out there. Right, and it was a three quarter ounce head uh, on this bigger setup, right? Yeah, three quarter ounce, just a homemade swim bait head. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, four and a half inch producer swim bait in blue crack is the color. Blue crack, I like it. Yesterday was obviously special in a lot of ways. You know, we talked a little bit about that window that they bit in. Uh, and obviously to, to catch the bag you did and to have them bite in such a short period mm. and capitalize on it yeah. is a big deal. But also you got a really clutch bite yesterday too that, you know, in the end was kind of the difference maker for you. Oh, it changed everything. You know, at 9.55, I had zero fish. I pulled back up here to my primary spot and I told my camera guy, I said, man, a five pounder would change everything for me right now. Cause 
I was this close to getting spun out and was just, I really needed something to happen. And I fired that swim bait on the line and let it hit the bottom and made a few turns and she slack lined me. And I jacked her and she come up and jumped and it was like epic and got her in. And that, changed, that was the turning point of the tournament. I mean, that one fish fired up the school and I caught 20 something pounds within probably 40 minutes. Wow. So it, it was amazing. And it all started with a seven something pounder, a great big one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the biggest bite I'd had all week on wow. the final day. That's awesome, man. All right, so the deal with the swim bait, kind of the technique is the long, long cast, like we talked about. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just gonna kind of let that bait go all the way down the bottom. And that line stops feeding. I know it's on the bottom and I'm just gonna kind of rod tip down and just crawl it. Just kind of, you know, not super slow, but not super fast either. Just kind of slow to moderate retrieve. And, and I've got my body squared up, my chest toward that, that bait, because when that fish hits way out there, that's gonna allow me to really get the, the best optimal hook set that I can and, and really increase my chances at that, getting that fish in the boat. So, um, you know, now that bait is probably a foot or two off the bottom right now, but as I get out here deeper towards this 30 foot range, you got two options. Either you slow it way down or you stop it, let it fall, hit the bottom, reel it another 10 yards, let it fall again. Yeah. Or option number two is just keep that steady retrieve and let that bait come over that ledge and they'll, and they'll come way up to get it. Oh, okay. And, and I've seen them do that on active target a little bit this week, so. But it's really, it's from a retrieve standpoint, you're not doing anything real wild to try to entice the bite. In fact, that steadiness is, in your mind, what you think gets them to eat it. Yeah, it worked for me. Uh, my limited swim bait experience is they want a steady retrieve, a steady cadence where they can track it. And like, and I think these big largemouth, they want to feel like uh, yeah, I'm about to eat you and you have nothing to do about yeah, it. You right. Know, like they, they just want to track it for a while and get real close to it and gulp it. And a lot of times on active target, I've seen where if like, you know, you jerk it or if you let it fall, like they'll turn away from it. And, um, now I'm sure that somebody out there has tricks that, you know, a different handle turn or something. <laughs> right, right. But I haven't figured that out. Um, my confidence is in a slow, steady, you know, retrieve without changing anything up. So uh, that's kind of it for the swim bait. You know, it's not rocket science, but the problem is hitting this stretch right when there's no eelgrass. Right. I mean, there's a ton of eelgrass this morning, but, but you know, y'all can get the idea of how it, should, sure. how it should go. For sure. You know. All right, Nick, I'm stubborn and I want to feel a swim bait bite, so I'm going to keep throwing this thing. But uh, this mag shaky head basically was kind of the other side of your approach, the more finesse side of it. Yeah, it was. Um, you know, even though it's a 10 and a half inch J mag, and, and I rotated a few different worms, but a few different colors, this was something that I could kind of fish in the same area and you wouldn't get many bites on it, but when you got bit, it was liable to go in the box. And, uh, you know, had a, a few four pounders, had a five pounder on it on day two. And so the worm was a key player as well. And uh, you fish it in the same area, but it just had a different little angle. Yeah, we slid on the inside of the ledge, basically, right. going back to the deep side. Right, and uh, this is something I kind of figured out on day two. Uh, I could get up here shallower, we're in 12 and a half foot, and I'm throwing out to probably 22 or 25, and I'm dragging it kind of up the ledge. So with the worm, I was using a Fitzgerald Fishing Stoner Series rod. It's 7.3 heavy. Had that pair with the Stoner Series reel, uh, seven to one. Just like the swim bait, 18 pound Sunline SC Sniper fluorocarbon. Okay. 
And uh, again, casting distance is important, but the 7.3 Heavy, when a five pounder has it way out there, I mean, I could really just, you know, drag her hard and get a good hook in her and, and kind of be in control. So uh, that was a setup, you know, it, it's, uh, it's, I use this rod a lot fishing offshore, uh, Carolina rig, uh, big Texas rig worms, mm -hmm. or a worm on the, the V&M uh, mega shaky head too. So it's, uh, you know, just one of those staples for me. And with the worm, long, long cast, just like with the swim bait, and I'm letting that worm go straight to the bottom. I've got a three quarter ounce V&M mega shaky head. And when it's on the bottom, I'm just gonna engage and, and just slowly raise that rod. And the setup with this worm is we're actually sitting shallow, throwing out deep, and we're dragging it up the ledge. I don't know why, it's just what the fish wanted, <laughs> okay? Can't argue with results. That's right. And, uh, and you're gonna feel it get real, real rough. And that's just the break of that ledge. And the rougher it is, the slower you, you drag that worm, because that's kind of where they're going to be sitting. And a lot of the bites I'd had, I would drag it through a real, real rough patch, real slow like this, and I would just stop it. And while it was sitting still, you'd feel one pick it up. Oh. And, uh, and again, you know, with these big, you know, J-Mag style worms, you're not gonna get a ton of bites. But the game plan is to get three bites and two of them be over four pounds. Yeah. You know. When they bite it, uh, would you give them a little bit before you swing on them? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so you'd feel the initial bump and you'd, you'd kind of get on your toes and you'd kind of let him eat it for just a second. He's pulling you in and you turn one time and, and, and just- Then you can give him the wood. Yeah, All right. right. Yeah, because uh, you got a lot of line out there, and you want you want to make sure that you've got as much slack out yep. before you lay it down. And um, so, if you look at, on some of that that footage from the tournament, I mean, I'm my feet are coming off the ground, <laughs> you know, because I know what bites this thing, yeah, you know, and um, but it worked out. You know, Nick, as much as I would like to stay out here and uh, try to beat on these fish, <laughs> yeah. eelgrass is a little ridiculous. It is. And uh, man, you've been on the road for a while, so getting home probably sounds uh, kind of nice. It does. Uh, so I think with that, we'll uh, probably wrap things up. I know, you know, since you won the All-American, that first Force Wood Cup you fished, you know, that's kind of when myself and the other guys here got a Got to get to know you, and man, you are truly one of the most humble guys that fishes out here, one of the nicest guys. And to see you get a pro circuit win this week, I think we all knew it was kind of a matter of time. I don't know that I thought it would come on the Tennessee River. That makes two of us. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, man, it, awesome week. Uh, truly awesome to see how it all unfolded too for you. Like, you know, they say when it's your time, it's your time. And that's right. This week it was. It was Nick LeBrun's time, man. Yeah, it was special, you know, and I was probably just as surprised as anybody to win out here on a TVA lake like Gunnersville. But, uh, you know, wins are special and, and they're not, they don't come along too often. So uh, it doesn't matter, Cross Lake, Red, uh, Red River, Gunnersville, they're all special. And uh, I'll never forget this event and how it went out right here. Well, uh, I think with that, man, we'll hang these swim baits up. We'll get up, run back, and uh, both get rolling home. So, Nick, congratulations, dude. Thank you very much. Heck of a job.